Why do we go through all that? Here's other things we have. We have to consider these stupid ass things. We have to. Age. Why? Because they may never get stronger. That's part of the already conditioned problem is you're not going to make them any stronger. So we don't know if it transfers or not because they're already maxed out. That's like saying we took a thousand people and we went on this diet and none of them lost weight. You didn't tell us they were already 1% body fat. <coughs> Who becomes, I could even hear your Irish accent in that. <laughs> Who becomes a big deal? Are you following me here? Other variables underlying things that might be going on. Yeah. Case. So, so does getting does transfer require this leg extension to even work for strengthening? Yeah. So here's a big question. We wanted we did leg extensions, and we didn't see them get out of the chair. Did you even see this leg extension go up in the process? Because if you didn't, they didn't get any stronger. So no shit. The machine rubbing on your ass doesn't make you get out of a chair. Unless maybe you put tax in it or something. I don't know. You know, like pokey things that hurt. So there's a big question. There's a variable. Did this do anything? Even for it? If not, you got two choices. It doesn't transfer to itself, or they can't get stronger, or I fucked up severely. And doing a leg extension. Because if they didn't even get stronger in the leg extension, there's no reason to bother with the other one. Any of this come out in research? No. Here's other things we'd have to consider. Where did you do this? This is stuff that's just non-exercise. Where? Could, for some things, we might do an exercise, the environment matter. There's blaring rock music. I'm sorry, I can't focus when that shit's on. Did you make everybody do it at 6 in the morning because you had class at 8? And some of these people work at night? because they're college students and they work at 7-Eleven because they're going to school full time or whatever. So they're working. What did you just do their potential progress? What did you do their general? Anybody here not a morning person try to work out in the morning, early in the morning? You can't generate any tension. Your brain's doing this to try to send signals. <laughs> That's the best you can come up with to try to get a freaking muscle contraction. Very, uh, here's a dumb one, humidity. It's huge for some people. And just put with that temperature. Not the same thing, but there's a relationship. All I'm saying is, in order to dismiss, Tom, we don't think this is a factor for this. We don't think this is a factor for this. But you know how you can tell me that? Because we identified them. You can't dismiss something until you've identified it and you know its potential influences. Sound, AM, PM. <clears throat> and we can, I have no problem marking those off the list, but I'm glad they're there to be marked off. That's called science. That's called viable research process. Where does sample size fit into that? Oh my God. Thing? This is huge. Now we're getting good segue. Evidence based. So what did he just ask? Don't you dare leave. You pee in that, don't you leave. <laughs> <laughs> so what did he say? Sample size. Sample size. <clears throat> so what's a sample? It's not the urine we just talked about. What's a sample? <laughs> <laughs> did you have one person in your study or did you have a million people in your study? In research, when they say evidence-based, before we do a leg extension, we need some evidence that this is going to help people. You did it on a million people, that's good research. Not if the variables are fucked. You did a million fucking versions of fucked up research. But here's the bigger thing. Who were the million people? If they were all from the general population and had never been in a gym, that still doesn't do it. 
if they've never done any physical activity, and we have to measure that, including manual labor, pick up basketball on the weekends, we have to measure all that shit because they are not the same. They're not the same as who? They're not the same as who? I just answered the question. My client. Because my client doesn't do pick up basketball. And my client doesn't... <clears throat> I don't give a fuck about your sample size because my sample that matters is what? One. One. And that is bad research, but on this given day with this given person, that's 100% of who it matters to. So if you've got this bell curve and you're using that for exercise outcomes, you don't understand exercise. Because it only matters to one person. Because what they're saying is, everything they come up with about plyometrics applies to Al. How old's Al? 98. Well, of course we're not talking about him. No, 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 no. You're telling me in research we get to come back at any point in time? Well, well fuck yeah, you know we meant that. <laughs> you can't do that. Einstein, well, you know I meant in outer space. I wasn't talking in an ant asshole. You know that. So you didn't say that. <clears throat> Although that might be inner space. Was a whole movie. Oh. That was a great movie. Oh, come on. It wasn't that bad. It's Martin Short. Yeah, it is. That's what made it a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, where's my guy? But look, for the majority of people, there's two things that pop to mind. Number one, I only work with these people. These are the high performing, high tolerance people, mm -hmm. and they're boring as fuck. You know why? Because you can be an idiot and shoot them in the fucking chest, which is why they draft 18 year olds, and it doesn't hurt them much. Or at least they don't die, so apparently it's benign, this bullet. I prefer these people. You know why? This takes fucking skill. This takes thinking. You don't learn how to do shit until every... This person can't do a fucking thing you throw at them. Not one thing. It either hurts or it makes horrendous noise in their knee or whatever. And you've got two choices. Back up and figure it out because you understand the variables. Or wash your hands of the deal because you're a big fucking pussy with a certification. And that's okay. We need a lot of pussies because they make us look good. That is the best way to get clients is for them to have gone to all these idiots and they come to you and it's like, well, I don't know what's going to help me, but for the first time it didn't hurt my knee, my shoulder, my whatever, my back, my systemic problem. And you've lived that. But you understand if they've never experienced anything, they don't know when good's good. Because the doctor says just go exercise because he didn't know anything. Fat smoking, drinking piece of shit. Oh, I'm sorry, he's also a marathon runner. That was a little bit of a generalization, but we'll go with it. Who? These people over here is what makes our industry think we know what we're doing because they can tolerate stuff. And you know what? We don't recognize when they can't tolerate stuff because it's part of the no pain, no gain scenario. Our entire mantra is built around including people that are tolerant in the least, a brief period of us fucking up. It's called soreness. Severe, fuck the delayed onset. I don't care when it comes on. I'm saying if it's so severe, your function is disabled. Use any version of the word, internal or external function. If you use disabled it, and you're going to call that a functional exercise, you're a hypocritical piece of shit. And I say that with unabashedly because you understand what we're responsible for. You understand what our liability is in this industry. It's not to make ourselves happy. It's not to create sweat. It's not to fill a schedule. You ever get on Facebook and once they find out you're a trainer, every ad over there is be successful, be successful. All that means is having a full schedule. It doesn't matter if you kill them all as long as you fill the schedule again, the new people the next day. We have a huge responsibility. 
You think when Mike goes out, before he was Mr. Hazmat, did he have responsibility to try to help this person that's down? By just trying random shit? If something didn't work, I bet he did some problem solving. But in his world, there's some things that appear to work a lot, and we're going to start with those. And maybe the order of them matters. But after that, he can throw up his hands because they didn't work and go, sorry, dude, notify next of kin. Or he can think for a little bit because he's got real experience. He could say, I've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah, but you've been acting like you've been doing it for two months for 20 years. That's not experience. That's just a fucking old kindergartner. 20 years experience is 20 years of mistakes being remedied through trial and error. God damn it. We don't have people with experience in this industry. We have people with paper on the wall who do the same fucking mistakes because they don't know what they're looking at and they don't know what they're looking for. And what is it we're looking at and for? We're looking at the body and the influence of forces. And just like we did yesterday, we're watching him, him, him do stupid retraction. Something that the whore will be like, yeah, I know how to do retraction. You guys, you guys spent an hour and a half watching 14 people do retraction? Oh wait, I did it too. 15 people do retraction? What is there to look at? Do you see how when we changed what we said, it changed what you did? Did you see how we moved back? We did his little experiment, a reasonable experiment. It wasn't a random, hey, what if we stick something up their ass? How would that work? It wasn't random. It was like, what if we lean back a little bit? So he can't use these. That's reasonable. We're going to try that again today on Rose. But we tried it. And for some people, it actually better to lean, to move his butt forward. And some of that had to do with them and the height of the thing and the plane of the resistance and all these variables. It wasn't just an isolated world called where your butt is. We did all this shit yesterday looking at something the rest of the world dismissed. A, because it's not functional. And B, because it's just easy. How many of you saw changes in what was working and contracting through the shirt, almost through a leather jacket? <laughs> that, to me, is training. Not because one of those was good or bad, but because I can either solve problems or create strategic variation. I can manipulate things that are real. Not, I did eight reps today and 10 reps tomorrow. That's not variation. Variation is, you only did eight reps today because we thought harder about it. Fuck the numbers. You get, doing 10 didn't mean you were stronger. You were less focused, you were sloppy, maybe. What are the variables in doing more reps? <clears throat> Just stronger, that's the only variable why you can do more reps, that's it. Do algebra in your head and see how many reps you do. So what is evidence, and what is science, and what is research? And why is this a big soapbox for me? Because social media has turned all of this into pseudoscience by pseudoscientists who are trying to get followers and can't give us a definition of science. Think that it's unquestionable when it's all about questioning. Think that real research, real good research, as good as it can be not knowing the variables of exercise, Think that this is the place to train everybody when you're not training everybody. Do you know how this bell curve got to be a bell curve? You think it got to be a bell curve because 100% of the people were right here in the center? This represents all the people. So which one is yours? Deepak Chopra said, whether you like him or not, it's a pretty good quote, statistics never apply to the individual. And some people go, well, yeah, there's a 40% chance. No, there's not. Because if this person had a 100% chance of not getting that, it didn't apply. Because his internal and external scenario, it wasn't an option. No, 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 Tom, we found that when we did leg extensions, 40% of the people got better. Yeah, but was that my guy? Because he can't do leg extensions. Oh, but wait, Tom, you just confused me. I thought you liked leg extensions. Guys, I don't like or dislike any of this shit. What works, appropriately works, strategically thinking about tolerance, thinking about more than this fucking set, 
and this workout, thinking about this rep as well as the long term. It's a bigger scope than this workout. We don't know what it is. As an industry, we don't know what it is. And that's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings out there, and there are going to be repercussions and all that kind of stuff. But grow up and stop being hypocrites, man. That's what I got to say to the industry. You got to put yourself on the line if you're going to put someone else's health on.